So we've got a happy drum edit that we feel good about. Now we got to do a little bit of uh, cleanup and kind of some kind of post production work, I would say. Um, maybe maybe you're prepping for a mix. Maybe you just want things to sound a little bit better um, as you're doing your overdubs and so forth. So let's talk about cleaning up the toms, which is a um, you know a, a easy way to, to to tighten up your drum sound. Um, it's not too labor intensive, and it makes a pretty big difference. Um, so let's just take a quick listen to the kit. Hearing everything, that's good. Good place to start hearing everything. First thing I want you to do is duplicate your toms. And then if you'll recall, you can do a batch rename by option shift and the letter R. And then we can rename 01 to edit. And now we have rack edit and floor edit got my um, toms already grouped together so I can just solo them with ease and I'm gonna zoom way way in vertically that's option command and the bracket to zoom in vertically and listen back all right sometimes it's really easy visually to see where the toms are and other times depending on how much bleed there is and so forth it's less easy this is somewhere in between so I'm going to do a little combination of manually listening and looking um, to find all the tom hits throughout the song. We've got some right at the front. So what I like to do is make sure that you have um, focus mode engaged up here. This is going to open up some uh, editing shortcuts that are really useful. First one I'm going to show you is the letter A. What A does is it takes everything before the cursor and deletes it. So when I press A, I'll zoom way out so you can see the whole thing happen. When I press A, everything to the left of the cursor gets removed. All right. This can be dangerous because if I had pressed A over here, I accidentally just erased a bunch of audio that maybe I want. But if I place a cut somewhere, so if I press Command E or the letter B, as in Benny, B. Now if I press A, excuse me one second. Sorry. Now if I press A, everything to the left of the cursor gets cut up to this uh, splice that I just made, like so. It's going to get really important really soon, OK? First off, we cut everything to the left of the cursor. Listen through. All right, and then we're going to listen to the tail of the floor tom, which is the last tom he hits. OK, doesn't last super long. It's a pretty, pretty well dampened drum. But uh, I want to discourage you from making the mistake of cutting your tom something like this. That's not what toms sound like. No, that's no good. That's what Tom sound like. But Professor Grotto, there's cymbal bleeding. That doesn't sound very good. That's what you're saying. I know it. Well, we're going to take care of that. All right. Just bear with me. So coming back to the front of this thing, we've got floor Tom and snare drum getting hit at the same time. So we don't need any rack audio right there. Let's listen to the sustain of the rack. Okay, similarly, it you know lasts maybe yay long. So I'm going to splice out that bit um, where I'm feeling quite confident that it has faded out. And we're left with this. Okay. So now I'm going to turn my tom group back on. That's just simply by pressing Shift, Command, and G. And we're scrolling along again. Here we go. I don't think there's any toms in this fill. It's not good. Okay, see a couple floor toms. Again, I'm going to press A. It's going to erase everything before that cursor. But because I have this little gap here before these tom hits that I want to preserve, they are not going to be affected. 
right? You see how that works? So it's just gonna, it's gonna nuke everything up to the edit points here. Bam, clean, fast. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that my floor time is fully sustained and then just splice out a section. If you're wondering, I'm just pressing X, which is cut. You could press delete, you could, you know, whatever you, whatever you like to just get rid of the thing. Um, a, to get rid of everything to the left of the cursor up to the edit points. And we're scrolling again. Okay. So now here's a more complicated section because there's some interplay around the whole kit. All right, so I'm gonna put a cut here. That's gonna protect me if I do anything wacky down at the end with my A button, right? I'm gonna zoom in here, just hone in right here, I should say, and this, that's the snare hit, but the tom is still sustaining ever so slightly, so I don't wanna cut that out. This is the next rack tom, and I'm gonna leave all of this junk in there, even though it's, um, even though it doesn't sound great, the tom is still sustaining, and I don't wanna lose the tom sustain. Remember, we've got a, we've got a solution to this problem. We're gonna to get to it very soon. All right, and then the rest of the song goes on for a couple more minutes with a couple more drum fills, but we're gonna ignore that for now. So, coming back here, we're gonna go to Audio Suite, and I'm gonna grab EQ1, which all of you have built into Pro Tools, and we're gonna take a high, uh, low pass filter. I usually set it to about 1K. And now, after each tom hit, we're gonna apply an audio suite low pass filter, but make sure it happens after the transient. So here's what's happening. The transient is full bandwidth. It's got all the high frequencies. Everything after the transient has everything above 1K removed. Let's show you what it sounds like. as opposed to this, right? The symbol is magically gone. But we still get the ooh from the tom, the sustain of the tom. Same thing up here. We're gonna highlight the, ba the back piece of that hit after the floor tom transient, apply the EQ, like magic. Now things get a little more complicated in this section. gonna apply the EQ after the rack tom and then I'm gonna go in here and just kind of try to sneak that in between each of the tom hits and I'm also gonna get rid of a little bit of the floor tom that would be bleeding into the rack tom here just the attack portion of it's gonna be minimized Same kind of thing with some snare hits between floor tom hits. And let's play what that sounds like. One more time. All right, and let's bypass all that. You can hear what it sounded like before I made those edits. And you can really hear it in this section. So we've just cleared out a bunch of transient bleed. We'd be removing any symbol leakage that would be happening and we preserve the full length of the low end of the toms. Very cool stuff. All right, and the last order of business is to apply fades. I've created a particular preset. I like this, it fades out the initial sustain, allows it to sustain a little bit at a slightly lower level and then fully removes it at the end. And I've got it set to way, way longer than I actually want it to be because of what happens next. Watch this. When I say okay, it asks, it says the fade length is basically too long. And the answer is, I know that. I'm gonna adjust to fit. And the reason I adjust it to fit is what it does is it puts that fade in all of those sections that I applied audio suite to. Let me just undo it so you can see how it looked. This is all audio suite. And with the fade, 
it goes like that. And it just, the fade now spans the length of the audio suite. So we have a really clean fade out. Preserve the low end, it sounds very natural. We just loop this section one more time and I'll toggle between um, edited and unedited. So there you go. That is the crash course in Tom editing. Thanks.